I love deer, but you know they're taking over the world, right? Deer have expanded their range, being able to adjust to urbanization, while apex predators occupy less than 10% of their historical ranges. Hi, I'm Amy from Fox Run Environmental Education, and I make videos on wildlife conservation and organic gardening. Today, we are looking at apex predators and their importance in the ecosystem. An apex predator is a species at the top of the food chain that has no natural predators in its ecosystem. Well, except humans. These animals play a critical role in maintaining the structure and balance of their environment. By preying on herbivores and smaller carnivores, apex predators help regulate populations and indirectly support the health of plants and other organisms in the ecosystem. We often think of large mammals when we talk about apex predators, but they are found in all ecosystems. Sharks and orca whales dominate oceans. Alligators in southern marshlands are apex predators. In the sky, owls and eagles. Apex predators are engineers and can shape ecosystems through their hunting behaviors and by influencing the movement and behavior of other species. So back to our deer, or in this case, elk, taking over the world. The classic case study done by universities in Oregon and Colorado has been the wolves at Yellowstone National Park. Elk and deer are both browsers. They may graze on grasses and forbs in summer, but come winter, they really enjoy small trees, twigs and bark, especially of willow and aspens. A hundred years ago, wolves had been hunted to near extinction in many areas of the country, including Yellowstone. Hunting, based on fear and a prevalent need for dominance, humans reduced the wolves to where they were endangered or non-existent in most of their historic range. Without their main predator, elk populations flourished. However, this meant more mouths to feed. Overgrazing and browsing of habitats started to lower the natural population of aspen and willow trees, especially along waterways. They ate bramble bushes, which had an effect on bear populations. Erosion occurred along waterways devoid of trees and affected water quality. Beavers, which also depended upon young trees, began to suffer. The natural balance had been disrupted. Almost 30 years ago, the Department of Fish and Wildlife began to reintroduce wolves to their native ranges and areas where they would be less likely to have human contact. 41 wolves were reintroduced into Yellowstone National Park and have established packs. They have reduced the elk population, which has in turn helped other species. Elk carcasses, like this one, help to feed scavengers, like coyotes, eagles, and ravens. Less elk also means more berries for our friends, the bears. Beavers have returned, improving water quality and fish habitat. Scientists call this trophic cascade, which is a beneficial e ecological effect that occurs top down when apex predators are added to the top of the food chain. This can have a dramatic impact on the ecosystem and the landscape from the apex predator down to the plants. In the same way that wolves keep elk from causing excessive plant damage, tiger and reef sharks protect reefs and sea grasses by keeping fish populations who eat the plants in check. It's interesting that nature has all of these systems to maintain a healthy balance, while we as humans struggle with balance in our own lives. So why don't apex predators become overpopulated? The larger the animals, the more food they need to sustain themselves, especially females raising cubs. Her body is growing a fetus, producing milk, and she is teaching the young where to find food. So she is expending enormous amounts of energy. Larger animals produce fewer offspring, and it takes a lot more energy to get them to weaning size. Typically, only 50% of offspring survive their first year. Some large predators like grizzlies and polar bears nurture their young for two years. 
With pack animals like wolves, the males stay one to three years before venturing out on their own, but females may stay with the pack for their whole lives. This longer period of raising young means a slower population growth. Here in the United States, we are lucky to have a national park system, but it only covers 1.5% of land in the lower 48 states, so not including Alaska. That's 1.5% is far below historical ranges for all apex predators, except the coyote who became an apex predator in regions where mountain lions, bears, and wolves have become extirpated. Outside of our national parks, what is happening with apex predators? The top reason that apex predators are in decline is habitat loss and fragmentation. For example, grizzlies in one part of the country are cut off from other parts. They lack safe navigational corridors to connect them to important habitat or other populations. The Montana Department of Fish and Wildlife, where this map comes from, refers to this as the Northern Continental Divide Ecosystem. We can compare that with their historical range in the green to current range in yellow. We can see how the grizzly bear territory in our lower 48 has changed dramatically. I'll link my research articles below if you are interested. We also need an effective plan to help people and apex predators avoid conflicts. I talked about this in my video about the famous Yellowstone grizzly 399 who sadly was hit by a car this past year and passed away. When these large animals get physically isolated, they also become genetically isolated. This can lead to birth defects and sus sus susceptibility to diseases. Male animals will take increased risks to look for a mate. Young animals may get confused like this yearling male black bear who ended up in the city limits of Madison, Wisconsin. DNR monitored him and he eventually made it out of the city. But there were lots of people screaming that he came here to attack their children and cats. Um, no. Apex predators are often treated with hatred and disgust. Yes, they do occasionally harm humans. But seriously, do you hate your car? In the first half of 2024 alone, an estimated 18,720 people died in motor vehicle crashes. Habitat fragmentation is not restricted to highways, but logging roads also break up forested areas. Our growing need to expand our own range has taken up large swaths of land. In addition, we practice monoculture by planting similar tree species instead of diversifying the suburban landscape. Wildlife crossings and corridors are one answer to help predators connect with mates, find food, and live healthy lives. These are natural areas that allow them to navigate suburbs and cross highways. Check out my video on them. The Paynes Prairie Preserve State Park in Florida is a great example of this in action. Route 441 cuts through this park, and although it makes for convenient sightseeing, many animal casualties were caused. Florida built eight culverts over and under 441. Only a year after installing the culverts, animal mortality rates decreased by 93.5%. Notice how they also made it friendly for water animals, such as alligators and frogs. We can also support preserving large areas of land for wildlife. These areas can be part of corridor systems and offer environmental education opportunities. Speaking of environmental education, check out my books on Amazon. The links are in the description. We can also support scientific research and studies on predators to learn more about their place in the environment and how we can coexist. Check out my other videos on apex species. I hope you found this video informative. Fox Run is a nonprofit with a focus on education, wildlife rehabilitation, and organic gardening. 
please do those YouTube things, like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching and have a fabulous sunny day.